What's up, everyone? This is Christian Duke. You're watching Iron Mike TV. I suppose this is episode four, but it's really not about episodes. Uh, this is a um, tribute to our good friend Rick Drazen, who passed away this past weekend. And uh, Rick had a show on Iron Mike TV. Uh, Iron Mike TV was our uh, imprint, which went from um, September 2017 to about the same time in 2018. And um, you know, I've been a huge fan of Rick's for a long time. It was because of Rick that I knew Rich Piana. Back in 2013, I had told Rick that I was going to be going to the Arnold Classic and that I wanted to meet Rich. And I wanted to have, like, an interaction with him and just not, like, just, you know, just somebody else, you know, going to shake his hand. And um, Rick called uh, Rich, and Rich knew who I was and... Uh, and said that Rick spoke very highly of me, which was very cool, because I looked up to Rick incredibly. And um, as a result of that, you know, Rich and I were, you know, friends, and I always got amazing interviews with him. And people who may say that I wasn't friends with Rich, just look at the interviews, guys, you know. Um, he didn't do interviews with just anybody sitting on the couch like that, and he didn't, like, talk hours to people, you know, after the expo hours closed, and I owed all that to Rick, and I never name dropped Rick. All these years, people were saying, well, how did you know Rich Piana? Well, because of Rick Drazen. And Rick Drazen and Rich Piana had an amazing relationship. Those guys were as close as close could get. Um, so when we started Iron Mag TV, I was basically allowed to have whoever I wanted. There was no... Uh, limits on you know the hosts that I could have I, I could have anyone and uh, I reached out to Rick Drazen he was one of the first people I reached out to and the first um, the first run of shows would have been a great one to to go with you know the distance we had Greg Valentino uh, we had Rick Drazen we had Chris the Goon Griffin who at the time was doing down and dirty with the goon <clears throat> and I get a lot of crap for that because a lot of people think that I was the one responsible for him putting Down and Dirty on hiatus, and that's that's just not true. Um, and I won't talk too much about that, but that's something that I, I want to get out there. And, and Beast Coast Live might be coming back, which is great on the Iron Mike TV imprint. But um, Down and Dirty was was Chris's first show, and it took a lot of time because he would do training and he would do his his um, nutrition tips and diet tips and supplement tips. And when Beast Coast Live came around, co-hosted by Big Mike Cox, I think that a l Chris was spread a little thin. So that's why Down and Dirty went on hiatus. But initially, it was Down and Dirty with Chris Goon Griffin. It was Rick's uh, Tips from Rick. It was my show, whatever it was called at the time. I had a bunch of them. Uh, Greg Valentino. And that was that was really an amazing lineup. And at one point, I think we were negotiating. I, th I think there might be an episode, I don't know, with Jerry Branham, uh, who was also very close to Rick, insanely close to Rick and even had a small feud. I mean, what brothers don't fight, you know? Um, so for this uh, tribute, what we're going to be doing is I'm going to share uh, a couple of uh, two or three choice clips from Tips from Rick, Rick Trajan's show on Iron Mike TV. And I've uh, discussed with Rob and we're probably going to come out with a best of Tips from Rick uh, video, which I'm going to spend some time on this week. I want to do it right. I want to get the, you know, I want it, I really want to do it right. I mean, we do it like in the five to 10 minute range, try to incorporate, you know, some really, really quality stuff from the 10 episodes. It might be more than 10 episodes. And also, um, some of the graphics that were used, uh, the vintage graphics also going to have our guy, um, uh, sort of, you know, revamped them a little bit. Um, going to try to like pump up the audio a little bit, just to kind of improve it a little bit uh, through PowerDirector and, and various different software programs that I have, kind of try to just bring up the quality a little bit. Um, but I mean, it's, it's really hard because to show you how much I cared about Rick and how much we all cared about Rick at IronMagazine.com and IronMag Labs and IronMag TV, just last week, I put out an article on Rick Drazen at ironmagazine.com and uh, it, it was about, you know, him being in the hospital for his knee and, you know, him being such a fighter and how this was not going to get him down 
and how, you know, his doctors knew that they had an A-lister because, you know, this guy was Arnold's training partner. And, and let me just say something on that. You know, Arnold had a lot of training partners, okay, a lot of people that lifted with him, a lot of people that would run and give him a spot, okay. In the movie Pumping Iron, you see this relationship between Arnold and Franco, and they did have a great relationship, and they were builders at one point i think they made a wall somewhere literally straight from greg valentino's mouth but it's true they didn't really build a lot of stuff they they did a job here or there uh they did train a lot together i mean let that that is real but when we're talking about like your workout partner okay arnold would go and pick up rick and rick would go and pick up arnold and then they would go to the germans and they would eat the giant omelets and then they would go to the beach and lay out and get the sun then they would go out to the marina and they would go out at night and they'd party. They'd have their cheat days where they'd eat whatever they wanted. I mean, like, I feel like Arnold and Franco were friends, yes, and buddies, yes, but a lot of that was for the cameras. Whereas Rick and Arnold were friends and training partners, and that wasn't for the cameras. If they were on the camera, great. There's plenty of pictures and videos of them training together. So it's not like, you know, like Rick was like Arnold's secret training partner, but it, was, it wasn't it was for... Um, it wasn't for documentaries. It wasn't for movies. It wasn't like it was, they were, they were friends. They were that tight. So, I mean, Rick was the real deal guys. Rick was the real deal, you know? And that's why he did the videos with Eddie Giuliani. And that's why he did the videos with the black Prince, Robbie Robinson. That's why he had the ironclad relationship with Lou Ferrigno was even on the incredible Hulk. Um, Rick was the real deal. Rick was, was it, you know? Everything he did in bodybuilding, he also did in wrestling. He did a lot of acting, commercials, movie roles. And he was he was also one of us in the sense that he was in the media. Rick's Corner, guys, is a program that has had ties to Iron Mag Labs, that has had ties to RX Muscle, that has had ties to Generation Iron. You know, Rick's Corner is a really big deal. It's a really big deal. And, you know, he got a lot of hits, and he won a lot of fans. He had the respect of countless pros and top-ranked amateurs. I mean, he was, a, he, was, he was like a superstar, guys, like he really was. I mean, how many people are stars in bodybuilding, professional wrestling? You know, you know he would go to Muscle Beach, and people would walk up to him and, and like, say, hey, you're Rick Drake. I mean, that's, that's, that's what it is. And, um, and it wasn't, you know... It wasn't because of Instagram. It wasn't because of Facebook. These things helped. Of course they helped. And, and they reinvented him. But he was big before any of these things existed. And, you know, it, it's just interesting too. He was an artist. You know, he designed the original logo for Gold's Gym. He designed the original logo for World's Gym. And it wasn't like he doodled something and that was it. He was constantly, he was in both of their halls of fame, from what I understand. He was constantly honored for his contributions to their logos, to bodybuilding, to wrestling, to the muscle scene. So when I started, when I was given the green light to start RMAC TV, like I said, he was one of the people in my short list of people that I had to go to. And, you know... It didn't, it, it, it worked out. Uh, we renewed a season with him. I, that's why I think I'm, I'm pretty sure that he had 10 episodes. Uh, he might have had eight, but pretty sure he had 10. Um, and, but the thing is with Rick, Rick's corner was his baby, you know, and tips from Rick, I think, started to, um, it, it kind of like the Beast Coast Live and the Down and Dirty thing. I think, I think Rick might have felt like he was getting spread a little thin, maybe. I don't know, because he did tell me that he put a lot of time into tips from Rick. Yeah, he had the the Rick's corner backdrop, so that was kind of like some some overshadowing there, like some 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 blurring of the lines kind of thing. And and and, and look, uh, Rick's corner was his baby, and I think that he did not want to. Um, I don't think he wanted to split his fan base between. Rick's Corner and Tips from Rick. When he had the Iron Mag Labs, excuse me, when he had the Generation Iron relationship, when he had the Arx Muscle relationship, it was always Rick's Corner. But now when he did Iron Mag TV, he was starting to split off a little bit. And that's the thing about Rick. Rick didn't half-ass things. He put his best foot forward all the time. He really, truly believed in what he had to say. And I think that's ultimately why, um, you know, his time at Iron Mag uh, TV was short-run. We certainly did not want Rick to go. 
uh, but Rick decided that he had to focus 100% on Rick's Corner. Rick's Corner is a show that I discovered, that I loved. It's a show that many of you discovered and many of you loved. And, uh, you know, from the guests to the commentary to the bodybuilding history, it, 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 it will be timeless. It will be timeless. And, um, again, his, his passing was a major shock to me. And, uh, you know, his son did such a beautiful video last week talking about how he was getting better and he was fighting and thinking about all of us. And who knows if at that point it was certain that he was going to pass or if his health was deteriorating. Who knows? But um, it, it certainly kept hope alive. And, um, you know, he, he, he went out fighting. You know, he went out fighting and he went out loving bodybuilding and, and, and he will always be remembered and uh, look forward to releasing... Um, Tips from Rick. Uh, I'm not sure what the title is going to be, but it's, it's going to be the best of Tips from Rick. And uh, I hope you enjoyed, well, I don't know if you enjoyed, but I hope you were able to, to get something out of this video here today, Iron Mag TV Episode 4, honoring Rick Drazen. Stay tuned for our video, the best of Tips from Rick. Uh, the Iron Mag Lab TV years, the Iron Mag TV years. I, I don't even know what I'm saying, guys. I'm, I'm, I'm so, like... Uh, I, I was I was I was not expecting uh, this at all, uh, you know. And uh, and uh, beautiful tributes from RX Muscle, Muscular Development, uh, Digital Muscle, uh, very very well done. Uh, a lot of outpouring of support. Jeff Behar put out a great post on Facebook uh, and his Muscle Mag Fitness Facebook group. Um, so I just uh, I think it you know I don't know if Nick Strength and Power has made a video. I hope that he does. Uh, but um, very, very sad to uh, lose such a great friend as Rick Drazen.